From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Like we always do about this time. <laughs> and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. We've talked on the air, as you know, on the program about two different things. And, uh, you know, if we live in Southern California, and all of us listening don't live in Southern California, of course. Some of us are only affected by one of these or the other. But in Southern California, some people are hit by both. We have two unfortunate things going on in the world, in our world. One of them is the fact that the economy is just plain lousy. Something we've documented on this program over the last few months. The economy is lousy. We talked about the way some people are economizing. We talked about people losing their jobs. Talked about whether you're afraid. You've gotten into all of that. And, you know, we're not exaggerating. Things are bad. Circuit City filed for bankruptcy. Mervyn's, Linens and Things, Shoe Pavilion, Bennigan's. It just goes on and on. Starbucks profits down 95%, unemployment heading up towards 8%. Stock market, <laughs> the toilet. You know the list better than I do. We add on to that the fact that thousands and thousands of people who live in Southern California are affected by the wildfires that happened over the past few days. Thousands and thousands of people. And uh, the result of this double whammy for some people is that many people listening to our show either have had to move in with others, family, friends, neighbors, or people have felt obligated to invite others to live in their home. For example, let me give you an example. Let's say, let's say your parents had a 401k and it dropped by 40%, 50%, whatever. And your parents are afraid they can't pay the mortgage on their house or they're afraid they can't uh, pay their daily living expenses or whatever. I'm willing to bet many of you have invited your parents to live with you. Or worse, your parents just simply called you one day and announced that they were coming to live with you. Or even worse, your in-laws announced they were coming to live with you and you felt like you didn't have any say in the matter. Now, when you add in the people who uh, are the victims of the wildfires, obviously lots of people want to do the right thing and lots of people have said, come live in my house, don't worry about it. We talked to people who had done just that. Who told their neighbors, come live in my house, bring your kids, bring your, bring your animals, bring your stuff, bring your, you know, smoke damaged items and put them in our garage and, you know, uh, stay here as long as you need to. So I've got to believe there's an awful lot of people out there who have house guests, the kind of house guests who are there because of some kind of hardship, but you are starting to wonder when they're going to move on. Or you have started having some kind of issues with your house guests. And uh, I understand what that can be like. When I was a kid, we had house guests all the time. And they had various reasons for being there. You know, my, my mom's family was full of uh, alcoholics, drug addicts, might even have had to dry out or had fights with their wives or husbands or whatever. And they would suddenly be staying at our house. And you'd wonder, you know, why was my Uncle Ray at the house without Aunt Tina? Why did Uncle Ray come alone? And the answer, uh, in reality, which I figured out as time went on, was Uncle Ray and Aunt Tina had some screaming, yelling, alcoholic argument. And then Uncle Ray had to get out of the house, and he came and stayed with his sister, my mom. So we frequently had Uncle Ray staying at her house. We had people who were splitting up, people who had drug problems, people who had money problems. It seemed like we always had somebody staying or about to come over or whatever who had some kind of a problem. So I have to imagine there's many people listening to our program who know people have lost jobs. 
who know people who are broke, who know people who lost their house because they were foreclosed upon. And um, somebody, either you or your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, somebody said, hey, come stay with us. I want to find out what that's done to your life. Now, I'm sure there are some people who just feel enriched and they're going to say it's the best thing I ever did and it was the only thing you could do and it's what you had to do and I did it and I'm glad I did. I'm sure there's a certain number of people who will feel that way and will say that. But by the same token, I believe there are other people who are just buckling under the pressure. I believe there's probably people out there who took someone in because of the economic hard times. And the person you took in now is putting you through economic hard times because they don't buy groceries or they don't pay rent or they they cause other expenses around the house by breaking things or using up too much hot water or whatever they're doing. That results in you having to lay out more cash and possibly puts you in some kind of financial situation. So I'm wondering how many of you have taken somebody in as a result of misfortune recently? How many of you have house guests? How many of you came home one day and you were greeted by your husband or your wife and you were told that family members were coming to stay with you? How many of you have had your marriages ruined or your bank accounts emptied? How many of you had um, relatives who did inappropriate things, you know, uh, they went out on a date, brought somebody home. You came in, you walked in on them on your living room floor. Who knows what? People who don't know how to use toilet paper properly. I mean, who knows what people are doing in your house? You were trying to be a good person. You brought somebody to your home. And it ended up being a disaster. If you're in that situation, call me. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 The Tom Likas Show The Tom Likas Show By the way, go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas See over 70 photographs of the Southern California wildfire submitted by listeners Just go to myspace.com slash T-O-M L-E-Y-K-I-S. Well, speaking of wildfires, or it could just be the financial wildfire we're having in this country, I'm sure a lot of people are looking for places to live. Temporarily, they say. Are any of them living with you? Lisa, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Yes. Wouldn't that be funny if I said, is this Tom? No, because people say it a hundred times a day. <laughs> no. I know. I wouldn't do that to you. How are you doing? Do you care? I do. I do. I'm I doing great. If I didn't. Yes. So anyway, um, good topic. I've got this um, this friend who'd, who'd um, come and gone. She was it was a psychological breakdown, and she she really needed some place to stay. I brought her in, and she wouldn't leave. And I just wondered, you know, it was hard on me. It was really hard. I didn't know. Should I kick her out? Am I enabling her? I mean, should she be on her feet faster than this? I, you know. Well, how long has it been? Oh no, it, it's passed. It finally ended. But you know, it, it was really hard on me because I didn't know if I could, if I should have been more forceful and say, "Come on, come on, you got to go." Or well, what do you something. can't see the mistake people make is that people say things like, "Stay as long as you like." Yeah, you can't say that. Right. Gary once said that to Dean J. Dominio, stay as long as you like. Pretty no, soon, Dean's bringing home his Italian friends. They're up all night long eating Italian ices. They're up all night long uh, singing opera. I mean, it, it, where does it end? I don't know. You know, I've got this really big heart and, and you know, good, good friend and, and all that, that good stuff. But then you wonder, am I damaging, you know, for, for being so kind-hearted and open? And but even easy. even now, you, you're more worried about whether you were damaging her than damaging yourself. I know. I know. Sorry. I know. I know. It's just that's that was that's my whole topic. It's like you you could really be hurting yourself more than you know by by being so you know kind hearted. Hmm. 
Yeah. I, I, by the way, have never offered someone to come live in my house. Yeah. When people call me and they say they've got a problem like this, I go, wow, that's terrible. Yeah. Well, that's awful. Well, I'm sure you'll be All back right. on your feet real soon. Hey, thanks for calling. Well, you know what? You're my favorite chauvinist. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Goodbye. Appreciate the call. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Yeah, I was going to tell you, it was it was kind of sad. I had a, a friend of mine, he told the uh, duplex from where my uh, one of my good friends lived with his daughter. And uh, so they were pretty much homeless. So I suggested he go live with my brother. And my brother had extra room. And he said, oh, only for a couple of months. And I've known him for a long time. Well, it turned out to be, I never lived with a guy, and it turned out to be worse than ever. He uh, he would go and eat everything in the house. His room stunk because he wouldn't clean nothing. The bathroom, the downstairs bathroom stunk because he didn't clean anything. And he would actually, with his daughter, he'd leave her there and take off. And then he'd come back late thinking that my brother was going to watch over her. And then uh, also he... Uh, like I said, never contributed any money to the house, never paid him a red cent. And uh, then he would go out Sunday mornings and buy breakfast for him and his daughter and eat in front of uh, my brother and his wife. And then um, there was a time when the winds were real bad over in uh, Chino. And, you know, it knocked down trees and the pool was full of leaves. And he sat inside the house and watched NFL ticket while everybody was outside cleaning up. So my brother called up and he wanted to kick my ass for a suggestion that he go over to his house. So it, it got pretty naughty for a while. But it, he finally moved out, but he never paid anything. Of course. Of course, you never made him pay anything. Right, right. He asked him, he says, oh, I'm going to pay you, I'm going to pay you. And we never saw it. So... Uh, my sister-in-law was getting ready to leave. She told him either he leaves or I leave. But for like oh, about a month, they both went out and started eating out on the town because she didn't want to cook anymore. Because she would, he would be the first one at the table. And it got, like I said, he wouldn't even wash the kid's clothes. He would throw it away and just buy the kid new clothes. Uh, that, that doesn't sound bad. like a lot of fun, boy. I'll tell you what, and I know a lot of people are in your position taking people in like that right now. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. So there you are. You've invited somebody into your home. Come stay with us. I know you lost your job. I've got a spare bedroom. Come on, stay here. Don't worry about it. I know your house burned down over the weekend. Come live at my place. And now you're dealing with the fallout of it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Eddie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom Likas? It's going okay, Eddie. How's everything? Uh, my reason I'm calling is because my wife had a cousin. She just owned her own shop in a swamp meet, right? And then she would make good money and whatnot. And then all of a sudden, I get a call from my wife telling me my cousin wants to stay with us. I said, okay, that's fine. And then we had asked her, what happened? Why did you lose, why did you, you know, why come you don't want the store anymore? Or she said, I got tired of it. It's just the same old routine. I said, all right, that's cool. But I just didn't like the fact that she would, she would come into the house, like she would own the house, and then, you know, she would eat all the food, you know, and she would buy her own food, and she wouldn't, you know, be like, hey, you know, I don't have enough money, but here's 20 bucks. Could I pitch in for the rent or for the cable or, you know, stuff like that. And then she had kids and I had kids. And I understand kids want to play with toys and whatnot. But I just didn't like the way that her kids were treating my, my one-year-old. You know, they would run around. Now, by the way, did you go. sign off on this before they moved in? No, no, no. It was just, you know, just like, it was just a one night. It was just, they told us. It was just only for a few days. Well, it ended up being for a month. But you did. And you then, signed off on the moving in for a few days. Yeah. And then, you know, she would say, I'm going to look for a job. But she never left the house. And then, 
you know, it struck me. I said, she said something, and I said, you know what? I don't want your cousin here anymore. Now, did this uh, cause your wife to argue with you or you to argue with her? Actually, no, because she saw my point of view, and she kind of, you know, we both agreed on it. But she just didn't know how to tell her cousin, you know, you can't stay here anymore. And the worst part is that she wasn't even her family. It was her dad's family, which her dad had passed away like four years. So she had like no right to call us even be like, can we stay with you? She just called us because nobody else wanted her to stay with her. And then the, to top it off, the big thing was that she had told us that she wanted her husband to come in to move in with us. I said, no, that's it. I don't want another man living in my house. The only man that lives in my house is just me, myself, and I. That's it. And that's it. Well, and I told her, I told her if if if, uh, if if you want to kick her out, that's fine. That's cool. Just you know, tell her that I don't, I don't, I don't want her here anymore. So that way, you don't have trouble with her or whatever. And she did. <laughs> she just grabbed uh -huh. her stuff and left. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and okay, was she, and by the way, what's what's the relationship with her like now? Uh, they don't talk. They they hardly did anyways. But you know, they they don't talk and. And her family... Why would you have um, somebody move in who hardly talks to you? They, you know, what, kids, what could we do? She had kids, you know, and we just did it for the kids, but then... No, aren't there other people in the family? Yeah. So why you? I don't know. It's, she she got kicked out of her other family's house. Too, I, I wonder why. I, the same reason why, because, you know, I, I understand I have kids and, you know, my house is a, the house sometimes gets a mess because they play with the toys and, you know, they want to play. So I would let her kids play with our toys. But I just didn't like the fact that they would take her fa my daughter's favorite toys and they would lock them up in the room that they would stay in. And I would never see the toys. And then they would grab my daughter's favorite blanket and whatnot. And I would never see it. They would never ask me for stuff. They would just grab it like if it was their house. And they would grab my remote control and watch my TV that I pay for and not even ask me for it. I don't know why you tolerated it. I don't know how I tolerated it, but after that... I no, it's not a matter of how you tolerated it. This is a different question. Why you tolerated it? Why didn't you take the remote control and say, Hey, folks, it's my house, my rule. I don't know, you know. I mean, my our, my parents taught me, brought me different. You just can't, don't take the stuff and be like, it's my remote, you know. So your parents had no rules at their house when you were a kid. Yeah, but yeah, they, oh, they had rules, but you shouldn't have any rules. Yeah, they, I had rules, but I mean, I wasn't just gonna take the remote and just you know change the channels, and be like, it's my TV. I, well, I, that's what they did. Yeah, I know. But, you know, I still wasn't gonna be that rude in front of them, you know. Oh no, no, you have off, to be. You know, just. I still played it off, and then I just drew the line when she said that she wanted her husband to move in, and I said, oh, no, that's it. My mom, my mom always told me, never allow another man inside your house. Even if they're drunk or whatever, let them sleep outside, but never inside your house. Never let another man inside your house, but a woman is okay? Not even another woman. No, yeah, but you did that. You allowed another woman in the house. Yeah, but, but the thing was that, I never talked to her cousin. I never did anything cousin. I never spoke to her cousin. That's it. If she would be in the kitchen, I would be but, in my But room your mother said don't allow another adult into the house. Which is different, which is another guy. But this case uh, but so different. it is, what was different about it? She was, she's married. She has kids. She knows, they're not, she knows her cousin. They know each other. They're not going to do anything stupid. So I was like, it's all right. I mean, and even if she did, you know, I would have just told my wife, you know what? She made a pass to me. I want her out of the house. Simple. <laughs> oh, God. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Uh, okay, basically, uh, I grew up... Uh, in a relatively small town. I don't, even, I don't know if you want to call it small, but uh, it was only six of us. Everything was cool. I grew up in a good house, nice household. I am Hispanic, and I always kind of was proud that we weren't like every other family out there who's who had like 10 people sleeping on the living room floor. You know what I mean? I and, do. And uh, what happened was my brother starts dating this chick. She, had, she already had a kid. One day... Uh, he brings her home, and she doesn't leave. And uh, at first I thought, you know, whatever, she's just spending the night, cool. I didn't think anything of it. 
couple weeks passed by, I go to my mom, I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, why is she living here now? And my mom was like, oh, we're helping her out. Don't worry about it. And at first, I was I was okay with it, you know, not my house, so I couldn't really say anything. Um, him and her just, like, always fighting, always bickering. And uh, in the process of all of this, my parents ended up falling in love with her kid. So I was the only one who ever had a problem with this. You know, one one morning I woke up and, like, three of her relatives were, like, sleeping on our living room floor. And I was just kind of like, what the hell is going on? You know? And, right, uh, but did, did you do anything about it? I, I tried to voice my opinion. Basically, they're like, we're helping them out. You don't know what it's like to struggle like this. You wait, will wait, wait. Find Who out. said this? Your wife? No, no, no. Not my, my parents. Are your parents? Yeah. So you live with your parents. I'm just trying to understand this. You live with your parents. Yes, this was this was two and a half years ago. So okay. I was 18 at the time. My brother was 16. Okay. Oh, I was under the impression this was currently happening. Oh, no, no. It was, it will, it's, it's still happening now. She's still living with us now. And not only that... She has another kid now. Why? Why? Why is that allowed? I have no idea. I'm the only one who has a problem with it in my household. I'm the only one who's just like my parents have come to me. They're like, we need more money, you know, because we're having to buy more groceries. And I'm kind of like, well, yeah, you have three more mouths to feed. I understand that, but that's your choice. Wow. Yeah. I have <laughs> no idea. No idea why people tolerate that stuff. I don't get it either, Tom. But you know what? Thank you for taking my call. We really appreciate it. Love what you do. Take me out Bill O'Reilly style. There you go, Eric. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. F***ing thing sucks. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. No good deed goes unpunished. Did you invite someone to live in your home because of hardship? And end up regretting it? Are they there now? <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to <laughs> Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going okay. You're going to yell at me so bad when you hear my stuff. <laughs> oh, boy. So anyway, I, my ex and I were together 11 and a half years. Um, moved from D.C. to Texas and out here to L.A. Um and he got laid off from his job. And after trying to put up with him for six months of being depressed because he lost his job, I finally had enough. And I said, you know what? Um, I can't do this anymore. I'm out the door. So I got a couple of roommates um, to move out with. And he had no place to go. So I'm like, okay, well, you can stay with us until you get your feet on the ground. And here it is five years later when I left the apartment to go to the gym now at 430. He was still in bed um, and still no job. Why do you tolerate that? You know, uh, I, I honestly don't know. I, when people ask me that, I say, you know, it's like he's like a brother to me. You know, we were together 11 and a half now, do you years. Un do you understand the reason he doesn't have a job yet is because they you're enabling him? Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, he's he just had a he got a job this past summer and he lost it. And that's when we sat down to work out the the payment plan. We figured out how much he owes me over all these years, and it comes to about twenty six thousand um, dollars. And I figure if I throw him out, I'm never going to see that money. You're not going to see that money anyway. Save me some time on that right now. Probably not. You're not going to see it. And but uh, by the way, it won't be twenty six thousand by the time he moves out. I know, I know, yeah. I just actually got a second job today so I can uh, try to make next month's rent. See, you got a second job. He can't find a first job. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm learning my lesson. I told him, you know, I'm giving him an ultimatum, you know, I said, because I've lost two roommates over this also. You know, so I've got to, I had to get a new roommate. I wouldn't um, tolerate it if I were your roommate. So, um, yeah, I told him, you know, the, the room's going on Craigslist next month if um, if I don't have anything from you. So I, I am at the breaking point right now. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, look how long you've waited. I know. 
I know. And I listen to you all the time, and I'm like... And 26000 a year, what's it, $100 a week you're charging them? No, it's... It, it, no, it's been five years. Yeah, well, no, well, my rent was five fifty because I was you know, five years would be two hundred and sixty, uh, two hundred and sixty weeks. Twenty six thousand dollars would be a hundred dollars a week. Well, that's on top of everything else. What do you mean on top of everything else? Well, I, I mean, I'm talking about because I, of course, he eats my food. I mean, I, I guess I was lowballing. I mean, I don't know. How much do you think he should probably be paying me? How much do you think he should owe me? In Los Angeles? Angeles? In Los Angeles for a room? A minimum. Well, I was figuring my room was, my room was 550 a month. So, is what I was paying. So he should pay a minimum of what you pay. See, I divided it in half. Why? Because we were, we, were, well, we were sharing the room. Oh, you were sharing the room earlier. Sorry? You're not for, sharing, for, for, are you sharing the room now? No. No. When my other roommates moved out, that opened up one of the rooms, so I moved down the hall. So how much do you pay? Seven fifty. And how much uh, is the place? Uh twenty two hundred. So you're paying a third, and how many people live there? There's three of us well, three of us with my ex. So there's a total of three. There's a total of three. Correct. So what how do you make up the difference? I got a second job. <laughs> So wait a minute. So you're paying seven hundred a month for him now. Yeah. So how can he owe you twenty six thousand dollars? Well, that was just, that just started this summer. My roommates moved out this summer, so he actually was able to pay me for the past two months because um, he had a job, and then he lost his job. So this month he doesn't have the rent coming up. Yeah. Well, whatever you're paying, that's what he should be paying. No, oh, I agree. I agree. Which is why I told him if he doesn't have rent this month, the room's going Craigslist. Yeah. Outrageous. <sighs> yeah. I'm in my wit's end. Thank but. you for that story, Dave. Thank you. Take me out tribal style. Here you go, Dave. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Kota lenenge, asika mama. Boya kota lenenge, asika mama. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Victor on the Tom Likas show. Hello. No. Get off the speakerphone, Victor. Oh, I was thinking of Tom. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Goodbye. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. Betty on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Betty. Um, I got laid off about six months ago, and I took everything in me to move back home with my parents. I have a 15 month old son, so it was just, I got scared, and I moved back home. And um, my brother. Uh, he got he, he quit his job about a year ago, and he's kind of been floating here and there. He has a wife, and he has two kids. He moved back home with my parents as well. When I moved back home, I made arrangements with my dad that, you know, I would pay his mortgage is only $250. I pay $600 in rent to him. I, pay my, I buy my own groceries. I buy all my own stuff for my son. I pay my mother to watch him $900 a month. I pay everything on my own. And my brother, who has his whole family, family of four, pays nothing. Well, with what you're spending, you get your own apartment. Well, yes, but I honestly, really, like, I've looked, and it really, I can only afford, after everything, to move in with a roommate. And so far, I haven't really found anyone who would willing to take me with my son. Have you used one of the services out there? I've tried, but they say that I make too much money to even qualify for any no, kind of... No, 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 no. I'm not talking about financial aid. I'm talking about there are, here in L.A., uh, there are companies that do this. I think one of them is called Roommate Finders. Well, I, I've tried, like, the penny saver paper and stuff. And, like, no, 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 but stuff. this is a service that has a database of places to rent and a database of people looking for roommates the way you are. And it's like it's it's like uh it's like a match dot com for roommates. And they would even take me with my son? Well, you put that in the database, you see which people in the database are open to that. Just like they have people in the database who are open to pets or not open to pets, or open to children, not open to children. And it kinda of ma like it's like a matchmaking service. It matches you up with an appropriate roommate. Yeah, I take my son to 
Because that's it. I mean, with childcare and you know, total everything, like that's that's what's keeping me there, and it's just driving me crazy. And you know, like I, if I even speak up, you know, I get yelled at, and like it's none of your business. You know, stay out of it. Why do you always have something to say? But I always end up paying for him. You know, I I feed my child dinner every night. I make dinner for him apart from everything else and for myself. And I end up having to feed his kids with the things that I buy for my child. And it's like, but I can't, I'm not allowed to say anything, you know? Well... (laughs) <laughs> you put yourself in this position. If I were you, I'd be out there using one of these services, finding a real roommate, and then your mom is going to have to figure it out for herself. She's driving me crazy. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd take my word on this. Look one of these places up and use it. I, I think I will then. All right. Mom, can you take me out with a spanking and a screaming orgasm? Yes, I certainly can. Mm, thank you. Here it comes. If you're ready. Right now. No, that's not it. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, no spanking, but we'll live with it. Can't find spanking, Can't find spanking in the database? Oh, my. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, have you had people moving in with you? You're being nice to them. The economy's bad. Some people lost their houses to fire. Have people moved into, moved into your place? Is it causing trouble? That's what I want to know about. Let's say hello here to uh, hmm, uh, Mario on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mario. Tom, I'm a retard. I allowed. A woman in my house to live in my house, and I had it Why? made before then. I had it made before then. Why did you do it? Because uh, I have two roommates that work full time. They're friends of mine, longtime friends, and I had them. Uh, you know, they pay rent and they go to work, and it's great. And I usually have the house to myself during the day. But uh, one of my buddies got involved with this woman and felt sorry for her, so he kind of bribed me to move her in, and I went. He bribed you. Yeah, he, you know, would he would advance rent. You know, the rent was being paid on because she, she would use a room. You know, there was rent being paid, and he would advance me rent. And you know, and I was like, "Hey, that sounds great." You know, she's working, no problem. But as soon as she, as soon as she moved in, like months later, it's been a year now since she's been working, and I have no privacy during the week, none. If I have a booty call, I have to go rent a, ro- a hotel room. It, it's it's crazy. I don't get it. I don't get it either. No, no, you did it. I know, I know. That's why I'm a retard. And I, you know, and she's cool. You know, I like her. But the problem is, she's always there during the week. You know, I tell her once you go to school and train for something, you know, try a different profession. Why is it your job to suggest this stuff? Just tell her to get out. <laughs> You know, that's my buddy's girl, too, so it's, you know, it's com- it's more complicated than that. Well, tell him she's got to get out or you're getting out. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd like for her to get a job, but, uh, you know, uh, it's very frustrating. By the way, as a roommate, I don't care if she has a job. I just care about whether she's paying her way. Well, it's being covered. She's paying her, race- her way so far. But if she don't get a job soon, you know, he's going to be covering her. And that's not going to be good for him. Well, it's not going to be good for anybody. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six the Tom Likes Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likes Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here we are in the middle of economic hard times. Now, if you're probably letting other people move into your home, any of these turn into disasters, that's what we want to hear about. 1-800-5800-866. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time caller, long time listener. Yes. I'm calling because I'm an idiot. I was feeling sorry for this family. They came to me last year in September, and... Um, I was having my house up for rent. So the guy came up to me and said, I have bad credit. 
and I need a place to stay, and it won't give us a place. So I felt bad. I ignored it, and, and I allowed them to move in. Well, in December last year, they missed one, well, one month rent. They said that they, uh, the wife said that she lost the money going to the bank. So I believed them. Well, the last three months, they said they had a death in the family, so they didn't pay. Then they didn't pay, so I gave them 30 days to pay. And so I came at the end of the 30 days. They didn't even have the following month's rent. So they got they went behind three months behind. Then I started the eviction process, and I was trying to be cheap, and I tried to do it myself. I messed up, and they got to stay longer. So they're still there, and I'm up lost about now that I've taken steps to do it right. I'm down about eight thousand dollars for being nice. Huh? Why are you being so nice? Because. One day, it, it all has to do with my stupid faith in, in Christianity. Um, the guy came up to me, you're a Christian man, and you seem like a good person. And I, and I played on that. I believed it. I'm like, oh, okay, this guy's a good guy because he's a, he's a Jesus guy. And it just Holy cow. It made me so upset. I don't even, it made me lose my faith in, in, in Christianity because of all this stuff. Wow. I don't know. I don't get it. Because uh, you had an agreement, you had an understanding, and uh, the person did not live up to their part of the understanding. So um, how Christian is that? Um, not very Christian. But it, my wife is just really upset because you know, I never really make big mistakes like this, but now I did. Yeah. And, she's, and now, you know, they're going to hold that over your head forever. Oh, Having to pull out our savings account, eight thousand dollars. Oh, Are you even talking about it right now? It just makes you want to go there and kill them. I wish <laughs> oh, that's not very Christian, is it? <laughs> well, I'm not very Christian anymore. <laughs> is that so? <laughs> yes, it just it just tested my faith really bad. I understand. Because you're supposed to pray to him, and things are supposed to happen. Yeah, right. Yeah, you you're know. praying he'll move out. <laughs> Yeah, so there, and that shows you the power of prayer, because he's still there. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, it's just incredible. And they have, um, I mean, I stopped cutting corners. Now I'm just going to hire people to rent out the place. I don't care. I'll pay my $150 to whoever a month, whoever rents the place out. But most of all, every time I hear you talk about hire lawyers, hire people, don't be cheap. Um, I really believe in that 100% now. I'm never mm -hmm. going to be cheap. I'm gonna, if I have to evict someone, it's going to be straight with a lawyer and not wait because they've been there almost four months now. Man, four oh months. man. Unbelievable. They have rights. They have, rights. They have the, all the right to stay there. And you can't do anything about it. Jesus. Unbelievable. All right, thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Richard on the Tom Likas show. Hey, what's going on, Tom? First Not much. Caller. Doing okay. Cool, cool. I just want to tell you a little story about my father-in-law. He moved to Florida. He was uh, he lost his job out over here in L.A. He moved to Florida with his brother and uh, stayed over there for about three months. And uh, he decided uh, he wanted to come back. And uh got a call from him one day saying that he was on his way back from Florida, back to L.A. And uh he had sold his house, and he had nowhere to stay. And uh we tried getting a hold of him, my wife and I, we tried getting a hold of him, and he his phone was shut off. And next thing you know, four days, five days later, there's a U-Haul parked in my driveway. And... uh and he showed up to our house to stay. And, uh, it was, it was, uh, pretty bad. He didn't, have, he didn't have no money. He barely had enough money to get over here with gas. And, um, and he asked us if he could stay for a while just till he got back on his feet. So I said, all right, that's cool. You can stay, but you need to find yourself a job. You didn't have a car now. So, so, uh, he went to work on his bike. Uh, well, he went looking for jobs on his 10th speed, and every every day he would come home, sweating. He would take his shoes off in the living room, 
socks off and his feet up on an ottoman, and we have a newborn, and that's where my kid puts his face on, and crawls around, and I told, I told him, hey, you need to uh, take your feet off, off the ottoman, man. I go, you're sweating, feet smelly. I go, man. I go, and, and it kind of upset me, but did it anyway. Unbelievable. Yes, I hear you. I'm listening to this. Why did you let this happen in the first place? Well, well, he had called and said that he was coming back to L.A. I, I told my wife, better get a hold of him because he has no family over here. Just uh, his son. But, but his why son. is this your problem? This is the part I don't understand. Why is this your problem? Well, <laughs> it, 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 well it, it's kind of my wife. She's all, what do you think? You think he can stay for a while and... You know what I mean? It's, it's her father. You know, Fine, like, but she asked you, and you had an opportunity to say no. Yeah, I did. I did, but he had nowhere to stay. He barely had enough money to get back to Alex. Whose fault and is stuff. that? Whose fault is that? Yeah, but I can't just leave him on the street. So. Yeah, you can, because it's not your fault he's on the street. Do you understand? Right, right. Yeah, and it, it, it got worse. It got worse. I would go, go pick up some food. Some dinner and 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 he wouldn't be home, but then he'll come home and and, and turn on TV and he knows we're eating dinner at the dinner table and he'd be like, "Mmm, that smells good over there." And I bought enough just for the family, so I'm like, "You want you you want a piece of chicken or something?" Oh my oh, God! He, 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 come on! <laughs> he make comments like that. Oh, what are you eating over there? That smells good. And I felt bad, so I offered them. You got a piece of my chicken. So I was like, man, I, I, I told my wife. You know what I, I say to it. people that do that? You know what I say to people that do that? I say, you know what? This is great. You ought to go out and get some chicken because it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he still didn't have a job at this time. So I'm like, man, we, we had, I had to feed him. And, and so it just came down to where I told him I actually gave him three weeks of, of, of money to go get. We, we got him a hotel, a motel. And we paid his, his uh, room for three weeks. He's a loser. <laughs> and and uh, and he found a job, but we still haven't received the money back. He of course said you have But you'll never be getting that money back. Believe me. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom dot com. It's Tom at blowmeuptom dot com. Don't forget, this Friday, Quiet Cannon will be appearing live. Somebody's winning tickets to see De La Hoya fight Pacquiao in Las Vegas. The Tom Likas Show.